Hello everyone and welcome to another time on Yossi Kingdom. My name is Toyosi and today I'm going to be talking about 10 mistakes to never make in your IELTS. Now I've done the IELTS exam twice and aced it each time and my high score across were 8.5 to 9.0. I actually got 9.0 in my speaking and reading and 8.5 in my listening and writing. So I'm going to tell you the 10 things that I think you should not make as a mistake in your IELTS. So never make these mistakes. So the first one is faking an accent. A lot of people think that to ace the speaking section of the IELTS exam requires you to speak like an American or a British person, but that is far from the truth. In fact, doing that would actually reduce your points because you're going to be focusing more on trying to speak in a certain accent instead of focusing your attention on what you want to say and the information that you want to give. So you end up stuttering and making a lot of mistakes as you're speaking. Your, your speaking will not flow well and that would actually reduce your points. So instead, just make sure that you speak clearly and audibly and that you're very eloquent in the way you're communicating. Take the right pauses, stress the right things and just make sure that your speaking is as clear as possible and that you pronounce the words rightly. It's all about pronouncing the words well, not about an accent. Accent is completely different. So don't try to acquire an accent because it will not help you and it will not increase your mark. And trust me, an American person or a British person know the right accent, know their accent. So if you're trying to speak like them, they will know that you're trying so hard to speak like them and it's not going to go out well. So just stick to your accent. Your accent is beautiful and it's good the way it is. Don't try to acquire an accent. Now, the second thing is lying about the information that you're providing. A lot of people want to impress in their IELTS speaking exam. They want to give a lot of information that really isn't true so what happens is that you are lying so you are trying to look for the the details to put in so you're going to be making a lot of mistakes you're going to be stuttering you're going to be saying um um, 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 and you will not flow because you are lying. Why do you have to tell a lie? Just stick to the truth. They can ask you about where you live or, or what you do. You need to give the right information because when you do that, you're going to be looking back at real scenarios and real things that you've done and real things that have happened. So you'll be able to give proper details. You will not be looking for false information to give. You will not just be writing a new drama script right there at the exam hall so please stick to the truth as much as possible and that would help you to flow well and that will help you to speak to the maximum and give as much details as necessary now to number three thinking it is all about a beautiful story this is particularly to your speaking and your writing a lot of people want to write amazing beautiful stories and they just go on you know writing all sorts of nice things and it's very good to have a very captivating interesting intriguing story but that's not all that there is to your speaking and writing of your IELTS exam the IELTS exam wants to test the depth of your knowledge of the English language the depth of your knowledge of the grammar the depth of your vocabulary the depth of your tenses your sentences and so many things like that so you don't have to focus on just the beautiful story that will not be enough you also have to make sure that the things within the story the things inside the, the details are jam-packed with a lot of stuff that you are showing the examiner how good you are with English language. Now, I'm not saying that for vocabulary, you should use a lot of big, big words that will show that maybe you're a professor. Speak like a normal person. Speak like a native speaker. You don't have to speak like a Ogbanyagbo in Nigeria that uses a lot of grammar. Just speak well and speak good English and give enough depth in how you're speaking and don't worry just stay till to the very end because I'll give you a bonus on how to do this effectively now to number four not planning before writing a lot of people think that they just have to quickly write down everything so that they can finish in time I know that the time is very limited and you want to maximize it but you're actually going to waste a lot of your time if you don't plan first because planning first allows you to arrange what you want to write down and arrange the flow in which is supposed to come out. For example, you want to write certain points in paragraph one, you want to write certain points in paragraph two, and on and on and on like that. But if you 
go straight into your writing what's going to happen is that you get to paragraph two and realize no i want to put this in paragraph one so you have to erase everything that you've written in paragraph one and then write the thing that you think was preferred to be in paragraph one before now rewriting all that you took your time to write in paragraph two and that's going to waste a lot of your time so if you had planned it you will already known the group of things that you want to say in your paragraph one and what else you want to give in your paragraph two so it will flow well and this is also for your speaking task especially your speaking task too when they tell you to write down things that you want to say before you speak for two minutes now a lot of people make the mistake of writing down cues so maybe they say talk about um, something that you enjoy doing during the weekend and instead of you writing watching netflix you now write um what i enjoy doing now when you get to start talking you'll get to what i enjoy doing and then you'll be thinking what should i say about what i enjoy doing but if you had written watching netflix all you need to just do is start talking about how what you enjoy doing during the weekend is watching netflix so you don't give um cues again for yourself in your speaking task two you actually give the answers so you just flow naturally so please plan plan because planning would help you a great deal now to number five reading the passage this is for your reading section of the IELTS exam now I know you say reading exam is supposed to be about reading so you're supposed to read the passage but trust me that is a big waste of your time it's just like a puzzle you don't read the individual letters in a puzzle before finding the words in the puzzle you just go straight to finding the words in the puzzle so it's similar to what you are required to do in your reading you are not supposed to be reading the passage the passages are usually so long and boring and at the end of the day when you finish reading it you still not understand what they are saying you still have to go back to still look for the answer and you're just wasting your time so what you need to do is what i call scan and a keyword marking and if you stay till the very end you'll find out how to get all the information you need to do a proper scanning and keyword marking it's very very crucial when you do a scanning and keyword marking you will easily find your answers in my IELTS reading exam i finished about 15 minutes before the end of the the time and when i mean i finished i had been done with everything i was totally done i had finished cross checking and evaluating everything that i had written and everything i was just waiting for them to take my paper and i still got my 9.0 in the reading so i know what i'm talking about you don't need to read the passage because if you do that you probably not finish the reading exam so please don't read now to number six not reading the questions or the instructions properly don't be too in a haste to just write the answers without looking at the instructions if not you would actually lose easy marks because for example there could be a question that says or an instruction that says that write in no more than one word and or a number and then you write in two words you know the answer but you actually wrote in two words so you actually miss it because you do not look at the instructions so please look at the instructions and then there are certain um, questions that can be very tricky especially when it comes to that reading section where, where it is true false not given for example let's say there's a passage that says um, the lion is one of the most dangerous animals in the jungle now the question reads the lion is the most dangerous animal in the jungle now if you don't look closely at that question you will, you will actually tick true but that is false because the passage says the lion is one of the most dangerous animals in the jungle while the questions writes or the statement is that the lion is the most so you have to pay attention because there are so many tricky questions in the IELTS exam and you don't want to miss them so pay attention to the questions and to the instructions that you've been given and you would find it good now to number seven passively listening this is for your listening exam a lot of people think that if you want to pass your listening exam all you need to do is to pay maximum attention to what is being said yes you have to pay maximum attention to what is being said but you don't have to passively listen you have to be actively listening that means you need to be writing down as you are listening to what they are saying be jotting down certain things certain keywords certain information that they are being um and that that they're telling you because it's very important so that even if you don't 
find the exact answer when you look at the things that you've written down you can use it to answer certain questions and this is especially for the deeper sections that's the section three and section four where they go on and on and on and on and especially for the obj kind of questions and the listening because sometimes the obj um, answers are paraphrased so the the way they said it in the um, listening is not exactly how it is written down it is t- entirely paraphrased and you have to look at it closely in order to be sure that that is the answer but if you are doing that when the listening is going on you're going to miss certain information because you'll be looking at the obj trying to figure out which is the answer when they are already given the answer to number two three four five six so write down as they are talking especially when it is in that obj be writing down as they are going and when you are done with that passage then you can look at the things you have written and use that to answer the question and it will really help you i remember in my listening exam that is the first one i did and i was listening to them and i was actually writing down that really saved me because i just noticed that everybody just turned their paper and i knew that i had to turn my paper to section four so i turned and i answered to section four and then i went back to section three but thanks to the things that i had written down i was able to use that to answer the questions in section three if i had not written down anything i would not know anything to write down and that really helped me to aid that listening so several times this is going to happen if you're not careful so you need to make sure that you are actively writing down so that you have a solid Um, structure in place so that you don't miss anything so should you not hear something very well or should you not um, really decipher that that is the answer because it is paraphrased in a certain way you can still use the things that you're written down to answer those questions and it will be very good for you and now to number eight pretending that you know the subject matter this is (laughs) this is for your speaking especially your speaking task three now your speaking task three is not about knowing your knowledge of current affairs or knowing your your knowledge about economy or government or whatever it's simply about knowing your knowledge of the english language so they can ask you certain questions that you're not conversant with or you don't have enough information about don't now try to pretend as if you know what it's about and start blabbing and saying rubbish instead actually own up to the fact that it's not a subject matter that you pay much attention to for example they ask you about um let's say um politics and you don't pay attention to politics you can say well i don't pay a lot of attention to politics and what's going on there because it's not my interest so i wouldn't have enough information to give you regarding what's going on with um, the different parties and what they are doing but the little that i know is this and then you give the little information that you know and say that i think maybe going forward i'll start pay more attention to it because it's actually good to know um, a thing or two about what is happening right in my um, in in the present regarding the politics in my country now you ne- did not really give enough information about you know the politics going on in your country but you spoke enough to let them know that you understand the english of what they're asking you about and you talked now you don't have to say um, i don't know what that means Saying I don't know what that means is saying that I don't know the English of what you said. So I cannot answer the question because I don't know what it means. But saying that it's not something that you pay much attention to or that it's not something that you are interested in and so you don't have too much information regarding that particular subject matter is good. It's fine. Don't try to pretend like you know. Otherwise, it will actually affect you. A friend of mine was asked about water sports. And in Nigeria, water sports... I'm not a thing like that. I mean, we focus on football or basketball or tennis and yeah, volleyball too. But swimming is not, or water sports is not really um, known like that. The highest we go is swimming. And even then, it's not really looked at as a sport, but a, a recreational activity. So he just went on to talk about how it's not something that we do here in the country a lot. And he doesn't know much about that information because it's not something that he's conversant with. But all he knows is about swimming and he enjoys swimming and all of that. But he has heard about surfing and you know boat riding and, and he has heard a thing or two about that being a sport. But he doesn't know much about it. And that was about it. And he was done. He doesn't have to start saying, okay, I know about water sports and um, there's surfing and start lying about information and saying nonsense that would just be a mess so you don't have to say you know about the subject matter but go around it and you'll be fine or you can just blame it on your country we don't do it in our country
that's it case dismissed <laughs> that's about it now for number nine being too academic this is especially for the writing task too now a lot of my students would say um that they read somewhere that you're supposed to just paraphrase the question in your writing task too that's for the essay right so maybe the question is discuss the disadvantages of living in a big city then you see them writing things like the demerits of habitating in an urban area are numerous it's good to look at these disadvantages blah 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 and i'm like who taught you that please don't do that in the exam or that's so boring remember the examiner is going to be reading over a thousand different answers yours should be memorable and it's not really all about that your introduction should be catchy your writing should be actually interesting even though it's not all about it being interesting it should still be nice and very detailed too so make sure that you write something that is very good think about it this way the question that you're asked is just something that someone searched on google and then they found your blog or your article that answers that question so just the way a normal article is online when you look at a very good blog that's how it should be it should be very nice it should be very interesting you can say something for that kind of question now you can say something like um, people often look at living in an urban area as a very good thing because it has a lot of advantages and benefits however there are certain downsides to it and it's important to look at these downsides in order to make an informed decision on whether you want to relocate to an urban area or not now that would be a better way of answering that question as opposed to saying the demerits of habitating in an urban area are numerous please don't be academic try to relax try to make it interesting even when they're asking you questions for your speaking please don't try to answer like as if you are you are in an interview room relax enjoy yourself this is a conversation with your very best friend and you're just chilling and you're just talking so be very happy with yourself give information try to really help think about it as if i am actually giving information that is useful to someone i'm actually helping someone with information i'm actually um, on a date and giving a lot of details and information you know just try to enjoy the process and you would have an amazing time if you enjoy your speaking trust me there's a very high chance that you're going to get a 9.0 because you are relaxed and it's just like your normal day-to-day -day conversation yet you're speaking well and the same thing with your writing make sure it's captivating and good now to number 10 not practicing until you gain mastery this is a very very big mistake that a lot of people make so you go for classes and everything and then you just go straight to the exam hall to go and write the, the exam trust me there's a very high chance that you will not get a very high score not because the teacher is bad or because you do not um, the the class was not good but because you did not practice what you learned to the point of mastery you just had a faint knowledge of it or you had a generic knowledge of it and you did not practice how to apply it until you got to the exam hall and then you realized you were too slow and so you did not finish or you realized that um you are not perfected how to actually do it so instead of doing that make sure you practice a lot practice makes perfect make sure you practice to the point where you have gotten about a 9.0 multiple times in each um, subject so that you know that i can as well replicate this in the exam hall don't just go to the exam hall when your last practice was um, 6.5 or 7.0 that means you probably can get 7.0 again in the exam hall and that's not what you want you want an 8.5 so these are the 10 tips that i'm telling you of the things that you should never do in your ielts and please you can scroll through again to read them again or to listen to them again so that you can you know understand them very well and i said i'm going to give you a bonus at the end and this bonus is this this is the exact formula that you need to get an 8.5 to 9.0 in your ielts now this is a formula this is not just teaching and materials this is a formula to know the exact thing to do for example in your writing it will show you what exactly to do in your introduction what to do in paragraph one what exactly to put in paragraph two what exactly to put in paragraph three and what exactly to put in your conclusion so if you follow the formula to the letter as in you will pass your else with 8.5 to 9.0 guaranteed so get the formula it's very detailed it's very structured and it's just the perfect guide that you need so you know that a lot of teachers will tell you so many things and so many information but if you want to know 
the exact thing to do in the exam hall like what you should actually do like the formula to do to replicate in the exam hall get this book and you'll be very happy you did and it's very affordable too so there's no excuse and to number two if you want a one-on-one -on -one class with me where i put you through on how to ace your ielts to get the scores that i did from 8.5 to 9.0 across all the subjects then feel free to reach out to me via the details that will be on the description and i will create a class for you now i only do private classes one-on-one -on -one, so i'll be able to put you through one of the classes and to go according to your pace and help you out so that you get exactly all you need to ace the IELTS and get an 8.5 to 9.0 in one take you can do this it's actually not that hard IELTS is actually very easy to be honest IELTS is just the normal day-to-day -day thing that you do it's just the normal conversation that you have it's just about you applying yourself and I'll show you all that there is to know about acing it and to give you the little little details on how to do keyword markings on how to you know actively listen on how to do so many tricks and tips within it so that you are solid and when you get to the exam well, you'll not be fretting you'll not be afraid you'll just be very sure that I'm going to box this thing to the very end so thank you for staying to the very end and please get that book and you can contact me too thank you and have a great day bye